Track 8. Olive the Jet Set Kitty You have told us that you want animal stories in Just Talk, and we are happy to meet your requests. This month we have got two feline tales. The first is read by its author, Sam Elmhurst. Two cats are sitting on the windowsill, looking like bookends. Their tails swish backwards and forwards like the pendulum of a clock, keeping a perfect time with each other. They look like they could be sisters. They're both ginger and they're both girls, which is quite rare for that coat colour. And they're both from Corfu. Perhaps somewhere along the line they could be related, I suppose, but that's something I'll never know. And another thing I'll never know is what they're saying to each other. Do they converse in Greek? Well, Honeysuckle is definitely more anglicised now, and if she were a human, I think her voice would sound very sweet and very English, rather like Violet Elizabeth in Just William. Olive, I think, would still retain a Greek accent. I can't think of anyone in particular who she sounds like, but I think she'd sound like this when introducing herself. My name is Olive. I'm only Lidl. Well, I can't help anthropomorphising these two dear little fur kids and make up conversations they might have with each other. I've also given them a backstory to why Honeysuckle can be quite snooty to Olive. It's because Honeysuckle travelled to England from Corfu over land and sea in a white transit van and on a ferry. And this makes her feel a little inferior sometimes to Olive because Olive shows off quite a lot. You see, Olive is a jet-set kitty whose journey to England involved a Mercedes taxi, an aeroplane flight and Le Shuttle and also being collected in person by yours truly. Now that is one stylish kitty. And Honeysuckle? <laughs> the lady in a van. Well, both had such a different start in life and how they arrived at their forever homes. It was exciting waiting for Honeysuckle and I was given tracking details by her courier so I could follow them throughout their whole journey, leaving Corfu on the ferry from Port Ingermanitza, across the sea and docking at Italy, and then crossing through Switzerland, detouring through part of Germany to avoid some of the toll roads, into France, sailing from Dunkirk to Dover, and finally the last lap to Norfolk. Along with all Honey's fans on social media, we followed her progress over four days to her finally arriving in Cossey. What a brave, magnificent little kitten doing that journey, especially as she'd had surgery a month earlier to amputate a damaged front leg. But bringing Olive home was quite a different story. Just as thrilling, but nerve-wracking too, as this time I was doing the journey to collect her from her homeland completely alone. Corfu and back in a day. Wow! Well, like Honeysuckle, she was being fostered by a lovely lady called Dawn, an expat living in Corfu, and one of those selfless animal angels who helped the strays there. I'd crowdfunded much of the transport costs and planned our journey there and back meticulously. Everything from which airlines allow pets on board what paperwork and health checks, etc., that are needed from the vet in Corfu, and, most importantly, which documents needed to be kept on my person to allow us through customs so we could get home again. And so this is how I did it, and what makes Olive a jet-set kitty. 
I stayed overnight in Sussex with a friend who dropped me off at Gatwick Airport at three o'clock in the morning. I felt horribly alone as soon as I entered the still busy at this time of morning airport and so wished I'd had company to do this trip. But I also felt a real buzz of excitement, thinking of the little ginger fur ball waiting to be reunited with me and brought home. It was strange to think I'd be in Corfu in a few hours' time, but with no holiday luggage, just my handbag and a small pink soft cat carrier, airline approved. Well, the EasyJet flight, which was my cheapest way for one-way travel, was due to depart at 5.55am, but I wanted to get through to the departure lounge as soon as possible, just in case I had any difficulties going through security. Not that I should have had any problem, but, you know, being on my own, I felt that if anything went wrong, I'd be really stuck. But all was okay. No official queried my weird non-holiday cat rescue mission luggage arrangement, i.e. said pink cat carrier. But why should they? I was just feeling a bit paranoid and rather conspicuous too. Well, once through, I bought a coffee and kept my eye on the departure board, lest I should miss any vital news about my flight. But all was going well, everything on time, and soon passengers were called to the departure gate. It was still dark outside as I queued to get on the plane. The engines were noisy, and all of a sudden I had a huge wave of excitement and relief too as the first phase of the journey I'd fretted about was over, and now it was on to the next. And for the next three hours I could sit back, relax and think about Olive. I wondered what she was doing at that very moment. Sleeping, perhaps, or frolicking in her little playpen on Dawn's sunny veranda. Or touchdown on the scorching tarmac on Corfu's very short airstrip is always a heart-in-mouth moment, but we landed safely. I got through passport control, and there to greet me at the airport was Dawn and her colleague Jane, another of the Agni volunteers. They were holding up a card, and on it was written, Olive's mummy, Corfu welcomes you. Oh, it was it was so good to see them both. And actually, I forgot to mention, I'd only seen them last week at the end of my holiday. And here I was, back again, just for the day. It felt very surreal. And when Dawn saw my cat carrier for Olive, she said, That's too small, you know, she's grown. So luckily we passed a pet shop on the way back through Corfu Town. And so here I chose the next size up. I really did want another pink one but I had to settle for black. The airline are strict on the size and dimensions of the carrier, and the nicer coloured ones would be too large and over the limit. So anyway, purchase completed, we got back into the car. As it was lunchtime, we drove to one of our favourite beach restaurants. It felt so strange to be back so soon, and now we were sitting at the same table we'd sat at this time last week. I'd left the UK in cold and drizzly weather and now here I was in hot, bright sunshine surrounded by people sunbathing and swimming in the sea. It was disorientating, feeling like I'd never left the island having been here just a week ago. And still my little ginger cat was waiting to see me but first thing after we'd had lunch we got a shout to go and rescue some tiny, sick kittens living by the bins not far away. We drove up to where they'd been spotted, but could only find the one minuscule little black and white kitten with sticky eyes and emaciated. So thin, in fact, that when we took it to the vets, our next stop, the vet couldn't even determine its sex. But... I'll just let you know at this point, in case you're getting very sad and very worried about this little mite, she did survive, given meds to prevent the usual blindness, which can occur very quickly if not treated, and was given the name of Dolly, 
and she's currently living a happy, healthy life with Jane. So, join me next month as we learn the fate of Olive. Sam, we'll be waiting with bated breath for the next episode. And no, I'm not going to make any jokes about cats eating cheese and then waiting for mice with bated breath. Oops, I just have. My apologies. <laughs>